and welcome to the first of four bite-sized videos on the IT security unit that is covered in the ICDL Foundation qualification which is for International Computing Driving Licence. This video will be covering security awareness and the areas that are covered are displayed in the bullet pointed text and we hope you enjoy this video. So how I like to explain um, IT security is more in the terms of a, a, a sort of generalization, trying to relate to everyday to day life. So we look at the first point of using um, computing, but also being aware of obviously, the security implications of using computers. Look at it from a point of view of a house. So um, you lock the door, you obviously have um, um, security alarms, etc. Anything that you uh, as a deterrent to get someone away. I always look at, if you compare that to using IT, it's kind of a good way um, to get yourself involved and um, understand some of the actual technical aspects, which are um, a bit more easier, specifically building up towards your test as well. But, but with obviously having the most majority of personal computers and portable devices connected to the internet, as well as email, it is obviously quite a vulnerable environment to be in too. So there is the actual um, the risk of being attacked from individuals with hostile intent, um, personally to get and, and not just to get your own personal information for their own purposes, uh, but also there could be even all malicious areas to actually corrupt and destroy data as well that you have personally with you. So there's uh, different mindsets, unfortunately, in the big bad world. But um, the key point is is being aware. So within your test, you may be asked um, a, a question, for example. Um, which the following would um, highly likely be um, a risk to your computer. So we're moving down the slides. We're going to go for a few areas that you'll notice uh, that they're, we're going to explain. So it could be like a Trojan horse or things that sort of nature. Okay. But the point is, being a, is, is for yourself is to be aware of some of the areas that you need to know and actually understanding what you are requiring to keep yourself safe. So so what would you use your security um, tools using computing for? So uh, do you also think that the actual um, security that you've got built into your computer is suitable? And, and would it actually be a deterrent against those uh, trying to go? So, for instance, is it properly protected? And also where you're using your computer as well, it's also a very, very important thing too. So if you are using it at home, it's a local base, so you can get or you're in control of your security. But if you're out of the way, for instance, if you're in a cafe or if you're in an airport, for example, what the security um, protocols, procedures that are set in place there. Some of those things we're going to be discussing too. But we also point out is that another thing in your test, you may be asked though what you would have to follow um, in terms of um, respecting the privacy and confidentiality. So you always have guidelines for relating to IT security and privacy of information. So you'd use the internet use policy and health and safety guidelines within your organization and at the university too. Next slide. So I think we're all quite kind of aware of the, uh, the big um, world of the internet. It's the communication um, through email. It's it's the equivalent of sending a letter, fast delivery. So, and, and, but the problem with email though is that it's not just the fact that it, it's it's an instant uh, messaging service, but you can also have electronic files attached to it. So you could attach a Word document, you could attach an Excel um, spreadsheet file, um, for instance. But with your email possibly in the open domain and when i say about the open domain that it may be um you may have used it somewhere and someone may have taken it um, away and written it down or posted it somewhere which is kind of bad and that's the problem is that other individuals uh, with malicious intent may use that and decide to send you an email and the actual file may appear something that it isn't and it's got a malicious purpose so when you double click that it'll obviously it will hit through and may actually cause corruption which is always why the reason why we always have um, antivirus software and firewalls prevented um, so that certain attachments um, won't come through which as you'll notice it's say in this actual area here which contain macros passing through so macros is a, a program with a set of instructions that will automatically run once it's opened so it can be quite malicious some macros um, are obviously good um, um, natured um, it depends on the actual reasoning for them being built so and created another thing as well with email is you can always tell straight away yeah an individual yeah how they're actually um, coming across to you too and that's the word netiquette which you may see in your test so it's using accurate and brief subjects uh, in the appropriate fields on the message 
and also ensuring that it's all spelt correctly so you before you're sending the message you're making sure that it's quite clear um all the spelling correctly done obviously making sure that your, your um, spacing etc but also you may have to be aware as well though that um in terms of sending a message um how it's um, coming across as well so if it had heated messages like flames or if you had a lot of exclamation marks or even if you made it um for instance um cup app uh, all uppercase letters it may seem a bit intimidating and a bit aggressive so that's what we mean by netiquette yeah how you actually um, um, conduct yourself when sending an email to and sadly it's a bit like um, the open world we do get a lot of um, uh, letters come through our post um, which is pretty much advertisement for things that we don't really want to and care about and you try your best to get rid of them but they still keep on coming through it's the same thing a situation with um, e emails as well with unwanted messages so unwanted messages are called spam which is masses of junk email that have been sent out by companies or individuals to let you know about something that you may be interested in or you may not be um, particularly Phishing, however, is a different game altogether, and both of these will come up in your test. Or you will highly likely be asked what is spam and what is phishing. So, phishing is an official looking email. It may look like it's pretty much um, been sent from organizations like bank, or it could be even if you've uh, just gained your driving license, um, getting an email for about obviously car um, MO, being MOT'd or anything sort of that thing. It looks a very formal, professional email. Could be from your internet service provider. And what the may be asking you to do is ask for your details um, personal information it could be bank details pin numbers etc first thing to be pointed out is being as we pointed out in the first slide being aware of your what you're dealing with in the in the world of the internet is coming through to you so if you're looking and you're seeing that it isn't it doesn't look very uh, legitimate you can also check the email as well on your computer and if you to click that it would, it would tell you if it was fully go for it and go on to obviously a search site and see if there has been any areas to that point out that it isn't um, legitimate so if you are a bit suspicious delete immediately because once you press uh, it could be even a um, a link on the um, email and it directly take you through to somewhere and it'll already start the ball rolling as well so always be suspicious of all emails from unknown services everyone bit similar as well to um, phishing is hoax email so it's um, the nuisances um, they are uh, highly likely to be anonymous you, you you'd rarely ever get a, a hoax message from a friend most of the time a hoax message is <laughs> pretty much a verbal sort of um, a bit of a kidology we should say but you could also find that nuisances may be a virus hoax so it might be alerting you about a, a virus that's been spreading around and it may even have an email it may say to you yeah click this link to protect yourself um, which is not it could be a full hoax saying that there isn't chain letters is uh, requesting uh, to messages moving forward and forward and scams as well um, so you could for instance, get an email come through that's stating, "Oh, hi there, we're um, we've got this such and such deal. If you just want to click this, um, or we've got a prize that you may want to win." We're always really tempted by um, these um, sort of prizes and caches that are available to you, but you have to in the back of mind and hold yourself back and say it is a hoax. So another thing as well in your test, you may get a question that's saying to you, "Which of the following is um, highly likely a hoax?" And you have a multiple choice um, options, and you click the one that's um, the most likely that explains a hoax as well. So, as well, and you've got false alarms, misunderstandings, and scares too. So what is a virus? A virus is a malicious so piece of software. It's introduced um, to the system often with the ability to spread itself to others. So the virus is not to be confused with the term bug. What a bug is in um, computing terms is, is a piece of coding, so a program that's been written, but it's not working correctly and there's an error in it. So if you look at um, my slides in PowerPoint here, if I was to click, for instance, uh, let's just say this button here, section, it says, I know it's out of the way and it crashed this uh, program. That's a bug in the system. A virus is different though. A virus is um, a program, um, an application, a program that once it is being opened, it could start the malicious intent that it's been created for. And it may also look like it's quite a legitimate file. It may look, see something that's okay. But unfortunately, once you get into it, it actually bumps and, and actually starts the process and it will trigger specific events in the actions as well. 
Some of the typical viruses that you may find, and you'll highly likely get these seen in your test, which is a time bomb or a logic bomb. So a virus may lie dormant. So, for instance, the time bomb or the logic bomb will only run, um, which is at a specific time or date. I always look at it in the comparisons of the Millennium Book, which um, I think not many of you will remember, but uh, it was um, something in 2000 that was going to go straight away. It was going to go bang, but it's a different with a time bomb because it's really, it would start the process of the virus at a specific time and date. Or with a logic bomb, an operation such as deleting a copying file. So if you did a step on your computer, all steps have been met, so the logic bomb will run. We point, came across macros earlier. So what macros are is they are files that are most commonly within Microsoft Word and Excel. So if you were to open these files, it'll start the trigger of events and uh, run the macro with its, uh, it, it, its intent of causing issues with your computer. Quite a common um, virus, though, is worms, um, which what worms is, it's a virus that will create itself onto a computer and it uses networks. So, for instance, you're on the Internet, you can go from one computer to the other and it will send and replicate itself within systems of a, with its own a purposeful um, malicious intent. All these are all going to be highly likely come up onto your um, test and they all do particularly come up into your practice paper that you can have a go at after this as well. So they're really, really good to get yourself familiar with the terminology that we're describing here. So how can you protect and save yourself um, with, when you see these viruses? And it's also be vigilant, particularly with emails. That's a big, big one because they highly likely can contain viruses from individuals that are unknown to you. So make sure you've got the antivirus software that is installed, but also keeping it up to date as well. We are going to come to that in a few more slides about um, steps that you can actually do to actually protect yourself. The big thing, though, is obviously emails with file attachments. So they are the major source of um, viruses that can be downloaded from the Internet. And, and it is normally an EXE extension. So that's an, um, a, um, a, a file that can be run. You can save it onto the computer and then double click it without even knowing. And obviously, commonly, because we're always like clicking around as fast as we possibly can. But there's also a way that viruses can, and it's highly unlikely, but there is obviously that still because it is a storage um, option, which is USB drives or DVDs. So if you were to um, open, um, insert them into your computer, double click into the folder, find that file and accidentally click it, it may um, um, run the, the virus onto your computer there too. Other types of um, threats that you may come across, though, and the big one is malware. Malware, another word that you need to keep an eye on when during your test, is which is a form of unwanted software, often with unwanted or malicious purposes. So a big one, and it's also, you may have heard this previously from, obviously, uh, other references, but the big one is the Trojan um, virus, so the Trojan which is a disguise as a link to a file. So it could also look something that's very legitimate. It could look like a computer game um, application or a graphics file. Um, it looks something that you know that, it's, that doesn't look any malicious. Um, so it seems very, very legitimate, seems OK. But once you double click it, its purpose is open straight away and it begins the process of um, its malicious purpose. Bit of an old one here, but it's still in the syllabus, which is Rogue Dialers. So Rogue Dialers is a piece of software that affects dial-up connections. Um, so what it does, it will actually start um, phoning up um, and replacing numbers that's set onto your computer and replacing it with premium rate numbers. So the purpose of it is to ring these numbers so that it's making more money um, for the individual. That's a very old school. Um, as in this day and age, um, old dial-up connection 56K is um, very, 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 very rare. But we have to point out as it is in the syllabus, it may come up in your test as well. So you have to keep in mind what a rogue dialer is too. Other types of threat, which is spyware and adware, big ones that I've, I have seen and, and pop up across many, many times when um, individuals have been taking their tests previously. So spyware, without the individual's knowledge that their computer is being spied on, so their interaction with computers or other servers, so changing settings, interfering with the internet browsing, slowdown um, of your computers that may actually indicate that your computer has been spied is being spied on so there may be a malicious program on your computer at the moment that is spying you and the kind of type of things that they do search for spyware is pretty much um where you're going to what you've been doing um what areas you're going through um and such so they can actually use it for their malicious purposes with later intent 
adware is software packages which automatically download advertisements so most of the time it's highly it's most it's mostly a uh, an extension on your web browser which what it will do is if you go to a website it's going to trigger all the um, the application and it's going to bring down onto computer all these adverts for other organizations to let you know so an example of that could be if you went to a supermarket um um uh, an online supermarket and it, you downloaded the, um, the extension and then you were searching for instance i don't know some cooking um, um sorry, um, food or etc uh, as an example and then what it will do is it'll trigger and bring other adwares up so that it's also a spyware mechanism where it's also looking at what you're interested in so the other organizations are going to throw you better deals or worse deals so you're, you're going to be clogged up with so much adware and it's, it's really really awkward so keep in mind with that as well and finally other ha um, threats um, hacking which is changing computer software code for other um, individuals for what the intention is to do so what that could be is an individual could get access to your computing so that's the person called a hacker and they could actually get log into a remote um, into your computer and change the software or even the hardware from its original um, purpose so that they can actually do it for their own means so the type of things that um, um, hackers will often use to get into your computer is hacking the password so um at the university or in your own computer or even any sort of like organization we have to log in to actually get access to the system they may hack into it and um, get the password or try their best and then once they've got in they've got that free space and then we come back to what we said at the start it's kind of like a house so um the hacker needs the key or needs the code to get into the door and once they've got access inside that's with their own intent what they need to do so for instance from a a house point of view they may want to take possessions personal data but from a computing point of view they want to highly likely may want to um, infect the computer or systems with virus or trojan horses for malicious purposes or also intercept and read any emails and communications that are going through to you as well so there's different sort of varieties of what a hacker and what their intent and what they would like to do as well